Kicking off our tour at number 10, we've got the Book of Kells at Trinity College. This 9th century artifact is a magnificent display of the artistic prowess and scholarly intellect of medieval monks. The Book of Kells, an illuminated manuscript of the New Testament's four Gospels, is filled with elaborate illustrations and dense Latin text. The intricate detailing is so remarkable, it'll make you wish your textbooks were this lavishly ornate. Can you envision a calculus textbook, golden illustrations adorning every equation? It would certainly make studying more appealing. But it's not only about the book. The college is a historical marvel too. As Ireland's oldest university, Trinity College is a time capsule. Its cobblestone courtyards, ancient buildings, and the famous Campanile transport you back into the past. It's a must visit for anyone captivated by books or history. So, if you're a bookworm or history buff, this one's for you. At number 9, we're taking a stroll down Grafton Street. This bustling artery of the city is not just a shopper's haven, it's an open-air theater. Pulsing with animation, Grafton Street hosts a variety of mesmerizing street performers, each adding their unique flavor to the city's dynamic canvas. From the deafness of jugglers to the daring fire-eaters, from melodic musicians to spellbinding living statues, the street is a roulette of experiences. The unpredictable charm lies in not knowing who you might stumble upon next. The buskers particularly deserve a mention. These gifted street musicians effortlessly command attention. With their guitar strumming or soul-stirring vocals, they have the power to transform an ordinary stroll into an unforgettable journey. As you casually window shop or quickly grab your coffee, spare a moment to absorb the artistry around you. Show them some appreciation, a nod, a smile, or even better, let a coin clink in their hat. Who knows, your favorite performer might just be the next big sensation. So, as you're window shopping or grabbing a cup of coffee on the go, take a moment to appreciate these artists. Make sure to drop a coin for your favorite performer, they might just be the next big thing. Number 8 takes us to not one, but two cathedrals, St. Patrick's and Christ Church. Both are emblematic of divine architectural grandeur, don't you think? These grand structures, each a beacon of faith, contains centuries of history within their robust stone walls. St. Patrick's S, the larger and younger sibling of the two, proudly flaunts a spire that soars up to the heavens at an astounding height of 143 feet. It's a place where, due to its sheer awe-inspiring atmosphere, you find yourself whispering your thoughts, even when there's no one around to reprimand your volume. Not too far from this gigantic monument, we encounter Church Cathedral. This structure is the more seasoned of the two, as its foundational stone was placed several centuries ago, back in the 11th century. To put it lightly, that's an incredible number of Hail Marys ago. An interesting tidbit about these two cathedrals is the uncanny proximity between them. They are situated so close to each other, it feels intentionally competitive, almost as if engaged in a holy rivalry. But again, doesn't a bit of healthy competition add a dash of excitement to everything? Just one thing you need to keep in mind, no cathedral hopping without a confession first. Landing at number 7, we're off to Marion Square. This is no ordinary public space, but rather a grand monument to the rich Georgian period. Imagine row after row of beautifully designed houses, each emanating a unique charm and narrating its own history, all grouped around an enchanting Central Park. And do you see that statue perched on rock? That's Dublin's beloved literary figure, Oscar Wilde. His effigy, eternally relaxed and eternally clever, keeps watch over the park. You can almost sense his vibrant laughter carried on the breeze, and his sharp wit echoed in the hushed rustling of the leaves. Take a leisurely stroll around the park and immerse yourself in the ambiance. It feels like you've stepped into a time machine, with the contemporary world kept at a distance by the imposing Georgian architecture. So, prepare a delicious picnic and pack a captivating book. You never know. You may just find your humor honed by being in such illustrious company. After all, as Wilde himself eloquently put it, I can resist everything except temptation. Don't forget to pack a picnic. Oscar loves company. We're halfway there. Before we move on, don't forget to subscribe and comment with your favorite Dublin site. Join the fun, be part of our travel community, and let's explore the world together. Your engagement truly helps us to create more content that you love. And hey, we're curious to know your top Dublin pick. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button and drop us a comment. All right, back to the countdown. Number six brings us to the epic The Irish Emigration Museum, a museum experience that wanders away from the ordinary. Epic is a true celebration of the dynamic history and impact of Irish emigration. 
By presenting it through a vibrant, captivating lens with an immersive approach, it has a certain allure that's as enticing a freshly poured pint of Guinness. Epic offers a kaleidoscope of interactive exhibits, each one carefully curated to take the visitors on a thrilling journey through the Irish diaspora. It's a journey that unveils the global influence of the Irish, the indelible imprints they've made on various facets of global society. If you're imagining it's mostly about how the Irish propagated their fondness for beer far and wide, you're partially correct. However, it's much more than that. It's an exploration of the richness of Irish culture, the rhythm of their music, the creativity in their arts, the fervor for sports, the brilliance of Irish inventions, and the resilient spirit that has left an indelible mark far and wide. The highlight? All this exploration can achieve in the comfort of your own space, devoid of any physical exhaustion or jet lag. So, fasten your virtual shoelaces and immerse yourself in the stories of renowned Irish emigrants from leaders to luminaries. Get ready to trace the steps of the Irish, minus the actual walking. Pouring in at number 5, we've got the Guinness Storehouse, a site where the magical fusion of barley, hops, and water creates the beloved dark brew so many cherish. In this seven-story architectural marvel, fashioned in the likeness of a colossal pint glass, you get to journey through the intriguing brewing process. Each step, from selecting the finest ingredients to the crucial final pour, is an episode of a captivating story. Journey's End is the gravity bar, perched atop the structure. The reward for your ascent is a complimentary pint of the iconic black brew. As you sip on your pint, 360-degree views of Dublin wash over you, painting a picture that words alone cannot describe. Some say, after a pint or two, the landscape morphs into a masterpiece. We won't spoil the surprise, you be the judge. Remember friends, the aim is to revel in the experience, not rush through your pint. Be it a seasoned beer enthusiast or just a wanderer, the Guinness Storehouse offers a one-of-a-kind journey through brewing history-entwined Irish folklore. And remember folks, the Guinness Storehouse is a marathon, not a sprint. Number 4 takes us to the Clink, Kilmainham Jail. This is a place removed from the usual tourist attractions, not the typical vacation destination for many. Fear not, we're not here for a prison term but for a lesson in history. This ominous structure first opened its doors in the year 1796. Over the centuries, Kilmainham Jail has housed its fair share of individuals, ranging from petty thieves to those incarcerated for political reasons. This jail played a pivotal role during the Irish struggle for independence in the initial stages of the 20th century. Some of the most notable figures of that era were confined within these walls. The leaders who spearheaded the 1916 Easter Rising met their end here, their tales etched into the very stones of Kilmainham Jail. However, it's not all a tale of woe. Presently, Kilmainham Jail serves as a museum, offering a unique glimpse into the bygone era. It stands as a stark reminder of the arduous journey towards freedom and the steep price that came with it. Embark on a journey through history, but remember to remain respectful. And needless to say, no dropping the soap. It's a prison after all, not a resort. Remember, no overstaying. Number 3 sails us to the Jeannie Johnston. An iconic moored on Dublin's River Liffey, this ship signifies an important chapter in Ireland's past. Once upon a time, over a hundred years ago, the Jeannie Johnston symbolized hope for countless Irish emigrants. Carrying these individuals away from the hardships of the Great Famine, this vessel delivered them to North America, promising a fresh start. Today this ship serves as an immersive museum, narrating the heart-rending journey of these emigrants and celebrating the unyielding Irish spirit. Close your eyes and visualize the deck humming with activity, the consolidated hopes and aspirations of the emigrants as they embarked on this journey to an unforeseeable future. Here's an intriguing fact, you won't experience any seasickness. Yes, that's correct. Despite the historical setting, your exploration of the Jeannie Johnston guarantees a calm, enjoyable experience, without the fear of feeling queasy. This experience is not limited to history enthusiasts. If you're intrigued by stories of human strength and persistence, this tour is bound to fascinate you. The Jeannie Johnston, a ship that promises smooth sailing. At number two, we're storming Dublin Castle. This historic marvel rests in the city's heart, a behemoth symbolizing Dublin's dynamic past. Initially established as the Norman city's defensive fortification, it transitioned into a royal residence over time, showcasing a remarkable transformation. This site deserves a pause to marvel at its distinguished architectural prowess. The stout record tower, the last standing medieval tower, 
paired with the luxuriant state apartments, once housing the English viceroys, culminates in an enchanting blend of history and sophistication. As you traverse these ancient corridors, you may well feel royalty. However, bear in mind, this is the thrill of royalty minus the demanding duty of managing an empire. So, soak in the majestic vistas, savor the wealth of history, and let your creativity soar. And hey, if you're asked, remember you're just on a tour, not orchestrating a takeover. Remember, if anyone asks, you're just visiting, not planning a coup. And finally, at number one, we're off to Aras and Wachterain. Nestled in the heart of Dublin, this grand residence, brimming with historic allure, establishes itself as the home to the President of Ireland, serving as Ireland's parallel to the symbolic White House. Unlike the imposing aura of the White House, you won't find black-suited Secret Service agents lurking ominously around this Irish gem. Instead, you'll find yourself greeted by welcoming, warm-hearted locals who are the personification of Irish hospitality, always ready to share a tale or two their anecdotes drawing you into the rich tapestry of Ireland's history. These individuals, with their radiant smiles and vibrant stories, are the lifeblood of this residence, embodying the charm and open-hearted spirit of Ireland in their every action. This grand estate, much like Ireland itself, is characterized by its warmth and openness, inviting you in with open arms. It's a testament to the beauty and unyielding spirit of Ireland and its people. And there you it, the top 10 sites in Dublin, now go forth and conquer.